Well, I'm gonna see if this records. Yeah, it looked like it's recording now. All right, guys. This is DJ Wolf Live. I got a couple of things I want to talk about right quick. Um, it's basically the misunderstanding of of our of us as a people by other people, particularly you know the people who ain't black. <laughs> you know, let me talk about it. This is DJ Wolf Live. All right, guys. Um, a couple of things is on my mind today. I just happened to think about this earlier. Um, you know, throughout the ages, throughout history, white people have always had uh, a convoluted uh, uh, understanding of who we are as a people. Uh, by making up their own stereotypes about who we are what they do and what they've always done is taken the things about some of us and made it a stereotype for all of us this is what they do with people of color but this in turn is an essence to make a, a statement for them as a power player they take things that are are not of a good quality of character of some people and say well this is what they all do they all these people do this these people you know they do it with every type of uh, 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 melanated race they've done it with African Americans forever they do it with Mexicans Asians Chinese Puerto Ricans, they do it to everybody of a melanated color. As long as they do it, they, they've always done that. They've definitely done it with us. I think we've been marginalized forever and a day. They still do. Prime example, George Zimmerman punk ass. Yeah. Did I say he was a punk ass? That's because he's a punk ass. Nevertheless, uh, he was quoted as saying, they always seem to get away. Yeah. Don't you mean Harvey Weinstein and uh, Les Moonves and George Zimmerman and Daniel Patali and Darren Wilson? Yeah. They always seem to get away. You know why? Because they perceive them as being people who are out, upstanding citizens. See, they try to undermine you on one thing with something that has, doesn't uh, actually mar with who they really are. They're racist. These are guys who are sleazy as fuck. Yet somehow or another, with a little money behind them, and it has been the case with all these guys, they always get away with it. They're not being marginalized. They're not being judged like they judge people of color. Because they figure, if we judge our people, then everybody can be judged for the character of, of who they are. And chances are, you'll be able to be in the forefront of having some type of power. This is a game that they do. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you this disclaimer about me. I'm not a pro-black person per se, but I do believe in things that address the issues uh, about us as African Americans and Americans in general and why we are in the situation we are as Americans all together, but definitely us as African Americans. Because people play these games with, 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 with mindset, uh, Jedi mind tricks, try to make you think, oh, you ain't shit and everybody else is okay. You know? And that's not the case. But they use that bullshit to try to control a people so they can have control over you in everything you do. 
that's the hardest thing that we have to deal with. One of the hardest things that we have to deal with. One, one, one of the many, actually. Where they're constantly evaluating some who do certain things to everyone that's doing those things in terms of our culture. You know? And it's obvious that it's about control. Because they wouldn't lump everybody if that was the case, but they do that on purpose. So that they'll look at you the same way you look at everybody else. Regardless of how much intelligence you have, how much money you make, how well off you are or not, it doesn't matter to them. You know? It doesn't matter to them worth a damn. Look at Obama. Obama had as half uh, black, half white. And still, he got harassed. They didn't care. You got any black in you, they're going to harass you. Look at Meghan Markle's. Marco. Marco, however you pronounce her name. You know, the, the woman who married Prince Harry. She's being harassed already. She ain't been in the family barely a half a year, barely six months, and already they harassed her. She had to move out because she had to move out. The Buckingham Palace. Her and her husband. So they wouldn't be harassed. Uh, I currently heard that there's a, a rift between her and uh, William's wife, Kate. You know, what? I don't know. Now that's the that's the that's the rumors going around. I'm not totally surprised, but I'm a little bit shocked that it happened this soon. You know, and I would have thought it would have been the queen herself that would have harassed her. But see, she's already being underestimated, undervalued, and, and marginalized just because she's half black. You know, this is what white people do. This is what they've always done. And unfortunately, until we can finally break that cycle, this is what they're going to continue to still do. No matter what we do, no matter what strides we take, no matter how Christian you are, it ain't going to matter. They don't care. The only thing they care about is running the show. Because they don't want they don't want much of anybody else to do it or have it but themselves. That's just a fact. It's called greed. Even when Obama was in office, the eight years he was in office, he had no real political power. He was a figurehead. He was a figurehead when they when they put him up in the uh, as a Democratic candidate against Hillary Clinton. That was the whole purpose of them doing in the first place was to make sure Hillary Clinton didn't get the nod. They did not want her running office at all. That's a fact. They really did. But it, it, the thing of it is with me is that politics ain't nothing but a bunch of people who play the game to make money. That's all it's ever been. That's all it's ever been. And we ain't talking about the small potato politicians. We're talking about the big, big politicians. Notice that many of them come from uh, well-to-do families. Uh, Hillary Rodden. Um, Bushes. George Bush uh, Sr. I mean, what, George H.W. Uh, Bush, who funeral was just today. This father, Prescott Bush, was rich. He hung out with the likes of uh, Bob Hope. This is documented. You don't have to believe me. Who uh, George W. Was, I mean George H. Uh, w. was also a friend of. You know. So I mean, look at that. Um, oh, uh, who else? I'm trying to think. There's a bunch of people. Um, somebody else is with money. Uh, Al Gore. Family comes from money. 
uh, John Kerry. I could keep going on and on and on. You know? Many of these politicians come from big money. The game is played with people's livelihoods and lives in some cases based on the politician strategy. And yes, racism does play a big part in that. I don't care what anybody say. What is this fool doing today? Plays a huge part in it. You know, they tell you that it don't, but we all know the truth. We all know the truth. We all know it's true. It just does. No, no, they don't do it. Yeah, they do. They can tell you this, that, no, it ain't true and all that other BS, but we all know better. Lord knows I know better. I know what y'all do. Y'all been playing that game. Y'all, it, it's nothing new to me about it. Y'all been playing that game for, uh, with, 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 with people, of, uh, 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 people of culture for years. You know? And that, my friends, is where it's going to make the change at. When we can go in and and put some real meat behind candidates who really going to represent us. And stop putting all this money in, into these white candidates who's not going to represent you. Or people who, who really ain't about your uh, your uh, culture or, or, or way of life or neighborhood. Because one thing I can say about Barack Obama, although he did live in Chicago at some time, let's be honest, he wasn't about your neighborhoods. He didn't come from your neighborhoods. Real talk, he didn't. You know, you thought that you might share a common bond with him on that because he's black, but the truth of it is we did. He showed his true colors once he got in office. Just like any other politician. And had the nerve after eight years of being voted in twice to tell you if you care enough about his legacy to put Hillary Clinton in after he didn't do half the shit he said he was going to do for blacks in the first place. And then throw you in the bus. Really? That's messed up. But to me, that goes to show you how, how what, you know, that politicians play that game with each other to, to scratch each, other, each other's backs. Especially when they pretend like they're formidable foes when they're really not. You know? Or never were in some cases. But got you thinking that. You know? The plan with that with Clinton, I mean not Clinton, the plan of this with uh, Obama once they got him in the people who the powers be the guy men was to bring in Hillary Clinton as the first woman. They said, well, we can get a black man in here. We know we have a problem getting a woman in. And that's when all his power structures lined up. And he enabled some of that himself. Look what happened. He worked he, he, he worked things out for Hispanics. He worked things out for gay people. He worked things out for women, predominantly white women. You know, didn't do anything for us. He didn't care about us. But then again, on the power play in his case he knew that the money was going to come from those three factions he knew that that's where he went That's that was his base the whole time still his base my thing that I said again I had a problem with with Barack even after post uh, uh, pres his post presidency in almost two years he is yet number one ever to call out Donald Trump and number two his wife has done that publicly recently. He's kind of laid back in the cut. You know, because he's going to let her push her agenda out. Because his agenda is her agenda. Not the other way around. See, Michelle Obama, as much as I love her, as fine as she is, Um, and I still do say that I give her credit what credit's due. She 
has the Oprah complex. She wants to kind of reel you in, you know, but really she ain't about you either. No more Oprah is or was ever. You know, I used to like Oprah. But over the years, it didn't take long for me to figure out what Oprah was about. Her own butter biscuits. I could get that. As a matter of fact, let me go in on that first. Because Oprah, uh, power player for decades, you know, what the richest black, not only is she the richest black woman ever, she's the richest African American ever, and she's the richest woman ever. So she's a triple threat. That's number one. Number two, Oprah is about the Me Too agenda. She has been for a long time. For many, before they even start talking about Me Too, she's been there. You know, she threw a lot of brothers under the bus. Um, don't believe me? Go Google it. Speaks for itself. Number three, she has a network that's been on, what, about 10 years now? Going on 10 years? And she already sold 25% of the 50% that she owned in own. The other half is owned by, I think, uh, Discovery Communications, if I'm not mistaken. So she only has 25%. The rumor has it that she's going to be out of that in about five years, which means whatever shows are on right now, in five years you won't be seeing any black shows on there anymore. It's going to be just like it was when she started out. Matter of fact, a number of Oprah shows that were on were not black oriented when she started the first couple of years, the first two, three years. Look it up. That's a fact. That was not her intention. Because if it was, she would have done that right at the gate. And she did. That's also a fact. Michelle Obama herself wants to be in that kind of spot like an Oprah is too. And I'll be honest, she really does. It's obvious based on the comments that she's made about a lot of different things over the years. When they get low, we get high. You know, you know the comments she said. But, and you see her on uh, Go on Hollywood on a lot of shows and stuff, man. You see, on she was a damn near a regular on Jimmy Fallon. You know, for real. And Ellen. <laughs> you know, she's been all over the place. You know, her role model, as she said this, I actually heard her say that. Her one of her role models is Beyonce. Beyonce. Really? Really? Really, Beyonce. She actually said that. And yeah, I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true, but she actually said that. Now, whether she believed it or not is another story, but she actually publicly said that. Why would I want my daughter to have Beyonce as a role model? I never understand. Not that I would want her to, because I personally, I wouldn't. I would not want my daughter being no have a Beyonce as no freaking role model. That's for damn sure. I really wouldn't. For a number of reasons. You know. I do think Beyonce is talented. She's not one of my favorite singers. I don't really think she's a great singer to tell you the truth anyway. And and I, 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 that's just my that's my my take on that part. I don't. I never really thought she was a great singer, even when she was younger. You know, she just had a great producer and a father and all, and all, all that. You know, the production values is crazy. But I'm just looking at when you look at people like Oprah and Obama. And uh, well, you know what I mean. They're not looking to really be there 
for black people. Oprah, I know it's not. I don't care what anybody say. Because if she was, believe me, number one, you would never, never give up 25% of your share back to the white people after you done put out all these black shows on here like you trying to be the next BET and you really weren't. You was out there trying to make some cash as a cash cow to get to build your retirement on. Ain't nobody stupid. I know exactly what the fuck you was doing. And yes, I said, because I, I firmly believe that. I really do believe that. Now, if she had 50% of the company, all right, let her go ahead and keep building on it and then sell it to a, like a black media album. Something like, I mean, I'm talking about a black-owned black media company that's looking to do, to get into something that's already established. That would have, I mean, legitimately one, would have been the way to go if you got some black investors. She wasn't looking to do that. Oprah was looking to get cash, some cash out that month. But using black shows as a fodder to sell back to the white media so they can get rid of black shows. See, she's a user too. And yes, Oprah, as much as I love you, I'm calling your ass out. I know you're from, from my, from my, my, my family's way in Mississippi. Y'all, you know, y'all from been down there around, y'all live down there around the same time, so. Um, because I got family from Mississippi too, so they actually grew up here. Just like you did. But I got call, call out what I call out, what I'm saying. You're about to bug biscuits. Obama's, particularly Michelle and uh, Barack, <laughs> about the butter biscuits. You know, yet we got the white culture still looking at us as stereotypical. Okay? Like, oh, all you blacks are all the same and blah, 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 even though these guys aren't the same. But yet they're not calling out what people have been doing for us on us for generations. They're not doing it. I have a big problem with that big problem with that you know I gotta keep it honest that's why this channel is called for all to hear I gotta give you my honest opinion about it I'm shooting straight from the hip on this you know I gotta tell you what's on my mind and, 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 and I have to feel it I, I, I feel that I have to because I'm tired of me as an African American middle aged man who spent all 50 some odd years of his life being told what he couldn't do or who he was or, or, or being trying to be defined who he was not only not only by people who really never knew him in the first place because the only thing they care about is what they want other people to view you as based on what they they see and not the truth about what's reality about us. But our own people. Our own people. On some respects have done the same thing. Obama himself. He referred to black people in Baltimore as thugs. This is what he said. He actually said that. Yeah, he did. What does that tell you? Caper for white daddy. Caper. I'm being honest. He was. You know, he wasn't the only one in terms of politician, president, or, or, or public personality. But he's done that. That's a prime example of what I'm talking about. Trying to, uh, not trying to, uh, well, basically keeping the perception of us as being just that. He's an enabler when it came to that. He was, you know. I'm just, I'm not doing this to put him down. I'm doing it to be honest about how he really is and has been towards us. And it's, a, it's, it's sad to me that somebody of a statue would do that. 
But then again, Oprah did the same thing, so to speak. Not in so many words, but in so many references and things that she's done. Michelle Obama, same thing. You know, and I hate to say it, but sometimes people of that stature ain't much different than white people in terms of how they view us. I'm just keeping it honest, guys. And my honesty is for all to hear. This is DJ Wolf. Of course, always questions and comments, suggestions, rebuttals, debates. Drop me a line. Right here in the comment section of For All To Hear TV on YouTube. YouTube uh, subs and uh, people who want to subscribe, click the like and subscribe on my YouTube channel here. And anybody, whether it's YouTube or Spreaker, who wants to uh, debate me or have a comment on it or any suggestions about my podcast or YouTube channel, please feel free to drop me a line. DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. That's DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. All right, guys. This is DJ Wolf. As all guys say, I had to, uh, to give it to you straight with no chase. All right? But, of course, as always, I got much more to say on the back burner. This is DJ Wolf, and I'm out. Thank you.